Good morning, Ridge, and welcome back to another episode of Tribe TV. I'm Maddie. On this week's show, we'll run down the top five worst sports cities in the country, stereotype all the different types of digital learners, and our very own Ashley Shepard will teach you how to drive. Stay tuned. Learning from home can be tough. We all are aware of the distractions that are in place. TV, your phone, and most importantly, your bed. With more on this, check out this short video. As a high school student doing digital learning, I understand how hard it can be to finish your work. But today we're gonna to be talking about the different types of students on Zoom calls. First up, we have the one that wakes up right before class. Coach Up next, we have the teacher's pet. Hey, Coach Sov, and how are you today? That's awesome. Wait, are you using a new wax? Because your head's looking a lot shinier. Oh my god, I'm right? I know. I, no, I just noticed the little things. In third place, we have the class clown. Yo, yo, what is up, bro? Chachos is Mr. Bend over here. You can call me Ben for short. Y'all want to know a joke? Y'all want to know a joke. Okay, okay, okay. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. We then have the no show. <laughs> Lastly, we have the clueless one. Wait, sorry, could you like repeat that like maybe one more time a bit slower? I wasn't really paying attention. Uh-huh. Actually, I have another question. Our football team has a big game this week against Mountain View. There's only two games left in the regular season, and a victory Friday will mean our Lions will make the state playoffs. Here's JD with sports. In cross country, our boys took 23rd place, led by Aldi Sassanto, and our girls took 21st place, led by Caitlin Lane. Congrats to Aldi, Alyssa, Dennard, and Lanny Pierce on making the 8A all-region second teams. Despite a 27-0 loss to North Gwinnett last week, our varsity football team still has a chance at making the postseason if they beat Mountain View this week. The Bears are also winless in region play, but since there are only five teams in the region, a win Friday will guarantee us a spot in the playoffs. Make sure you follow Ridge Athletics on, on the social medias for more information about the game. In college football, the Florida Gators beat Georgia 44-28 on Saturday to basically end any hopes of a national title for the Bulldogs. Florida, however, will now be a part of the SEC championship and will most likely play Alabama. In the NFL, the Atlanta Falcons had a solid 34-27 victory over the Denver Broncos. The Falcons had a nice lead in the fourth quarter, and we know what every Atlanta sports fan was thinking about at the time. But they did not blow it. I know, it shocked me too. I've been so discouraged that I decided to see where Atlanta falls in the worst sports cities in the country. This week, I'll bring you number five, Minneapolis. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my segment of the top five worst sports cities of all time. But first, for some honorable mentions. The honorable mentions are D.C., Phoenix, and New Orleans. The fifth worst sports city of all time is... McDermott is the snapper. And the kick is no good! And first, we'll start with the Minnesota Vikings, the football team in Minnesota. So the Minnesota Vikings, they've always been okay. Some years they like the playoffs, some years they won't. But the years that they do, they just can't get it done. They even went to the Super Bowl four times in seven years. And never even won. They never even won one. And they even had the best, one of the best wide receivers of all time, in Randy Moss. And they still couldn't get it done. They just, they, they just been a disappointment. Now for the professional basketball team in Minnesota, the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves, they're, they're just straight traps. They've never really been anything. And as soon as they got their best player, Kevin Garnett, they traded him away, like seven years after. They, they just been never really been able to do anything. And they're just straight traps for their whole entire history. Now for the baseball team, the Minnesota Twins. Now, the Minnesota Twins do have three, three uh, World Series rings, but those occurred decades ago, like in the old Stone Ages. And like ever since then, they've just been meh, make the playoffs some years, some years they don't. They even have good players like Josh Donaldson and Nelson Cruz, 
so they just still can't get it done. They're just eh. Well, that's all I got. Thanks for joining me on episode one, and I hope you like that. You like that. Thanks, JD. You can't possibly attend Friday's game without some Ridge gear. If you don't know where to find some, Tyler is here to help. Hey, Peach Ridge High School students. Have you been noticing a lack of school spirit this year? I have a solution to this problem. It's the new line of Peach Ridge athletic clothing. This is an example of some new type of clothing that you could get from the website, linked here. You can also, if you're in person school, you can go to the cafeteria at the Lion's Den during lunch and get whatever you need from there. This is an example of a Peach Ridge Lion who goes above and beyond when buying their school spirit and they really want to show off. Oh, and how could I forget? He bought the custom Peach Ridge socks too. School spirit benefits both you and the school. The school gets to make money off the sales of the clothes which in turn leads to bigger events and greater school activities with more money. And you benefit because you get to have school spirit and wear it around at football games and have a nice new piece of clothing. Thank you, and back to RVN. Three, two, one. <laughs> With all that's going on in the world, it's hard to figure out which news source to trust. One tells you one thing while the other tells you the complete opposite. It's rather frustrating. It's hard to tell which one is telling the truth. Luckily, I discovered Vidalia News, a channel that is 100% not accurate. Good morning, Vidalia. Today is Wednesday, November 4th, 2020, and I'm your news anchor, Libby Gowan. This morning, Trump was called upon to deliver his concession speech after the results of the election aired. Trump waved his hand at reporters, demanding that the ballots be recounted and claiming that all mail-in ballots be fraudulent. Following his victory over Trump in the election, Biden stood proudly to give a speech. He took to the stage in his hometown, Scranton, Pennsylvania, to address the American people. Quote, I'd like to thank God, end quote. Biden froze, seemingly forgetting his speech before his wife and now First Lady Jill pointed down to the script in front of him. In international news, the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has since kindly requested that Americans do not seek asylum in Canada. Quote, we don't want you, eh? End quote. The U.S.-Canadian border has since been closed reportedly due to surges of COVID-19 cases, but insiders at the Border Patrol attest that they were given strict orders to, quote, keep the Americans out, end quote. Whispers of a potential wall have been passed around, but no official plans or policies have been announced. That's all the news we have for you today, Vidalia. Your most trusted news will be around all day, getting minute-to-minute -minute coverage of the aftermath of America's most dreaded election. Stay tuned. I know that a lot of you will be heading out of the DMV to get your license. If you're not prepared, you could be really nervous and might fail. Trust me, no one wants to be the person who fails their driving test. Well, have no fear. Ashley's here to tell you all the tips and tricks to be a great driver. Did I ask? Did I ask? Did I ask? No, but I answered. It's a strange feeling. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Ask Ashley, where I answer the questions that no one asked me. In today's episode, I'm answering a question that all of you have asked. You've just never asked me, which is where you made your first mistake. How do I drive? Like I truly am probably one of the best drivers you've ever seen and I've never had a single professional lesson. I know, mind blowing. So I'm gonna be teaching my best friend Ashton how to drive because he is getting his license tomorrow, which is super exciting. So, hope you guys enjoy. My first tip for you guys is to get comfortable. Oh my God! <laughs> so, I don't use these when I drive. And then we're going to pull the leg nice and comfy, like this. Well, sometimes you pull up both legs, but that makes it kind of difficult because then, like, you can't press the brake. Next, before you even think about driving, you need to have an air freshener. Oh These, God. again, it's an experience. So this experience smells like pink sand. You always know what your car does. For example, this light is just for decoration. It's always on. Okay, so he were in three and nine, but at Ashley's School of Automo Automobile Driving, we actually go with the solid six, just that. This hand's purpose is not to touch this. Next, we're gonna talk about 
your car keys. Because if your car keys are bland, you can't even get in the car. <laughs> like you have to have some pizzazz when it comes to your keys. Okay. Keychain. First we have the keychain. It um, has my name on it in case I forget. In case you forget your name or you forget your keychain somewhere. In case I forget my name. Okay. I know we have the key, but that's honestly the least important like part of this whole thing. And then each of the knobs, like you're gonna wanna know what they all do. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it off. It's like when you go down, it's your right, it's your left blinker. You not know you're right from left? Yeah. X, it's important that you understand the speed limit. Because the speed limit is strictly a suggestion, which means 10 over is more than adequate. Red, like, actually needs to go. But that's all the time we have well, today. I didn't even drive. I'll see you next week. Well, that's all the news you are for you this week. I'm Maddie. Have a great week, Ridge.